It's time for another historic challenge video to round off 2022. And we're ending the year with a bang. We are super excited to be back at the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds and today we've got the opportunity to fire some genuine historic firearms from the Wild West period, one of my absolute favourite periods of history. At least that's what I think we're doing but I've been waiting here for about 15 minutes and Luke just hasn't shown up so I don't really know. Oh, for God's sake. Well howdy partner, how are you doing mate? Ready to shoot some guns? What are you doing? What? I'm, I'm in the costume. We're not, we're not in period costume for this episode. I told you this. We've had this conversation. No, we're a couple of gunslingers. Jesse James, Billy the Kid. You, you need to take this off. You need to. Look, we are we are handling some deadly firearms today, and I think you need to take this more seriously. I have to take this off. Yep, do I? Take that off. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to get changed. Okay. Unbelievable. And you're late. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holly, get this. How was that allowed? Show it. I'm allowed to wear that. The museum have said I'm allowed to wear it, okay? What, Jonathan Ferguson said you could wear it, did yeah. he? Yeah, because I won the last competition, all right? Unbelievable. I'm the show. Shut up. Now suitably dressed for the occasion, we were back in familiar territory, surrounded by rare firearms. The Royal Armouries in Leeds houses one of the largest collections of arms and armour in the world. Looking after a large part of it is firearms curator and YouTube sensation, Jonathan Ferguson. Jonathan, we're back here. Thanks for having us again. Welcome, guys. You're most welcome. Good to have you back. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, we were obviously here before, and we can't claim to have never shot anything before, because last time we were here, we were shot an Arquebus, a brown vest, and a Lee Enfield. But today we're going for a slightly different period. What are we going to be shooting today? Yeah, well, you've kind of covered a swathe of history there, albeit with only a few shots. So, you know, expectations won't be too high. <laughs> um, they won't. <laughs> but I gather you guys this time are interested in firearms of the Old West. We are. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, what are the classics? You've got the Winchester lever action rifle, staple, you know, ranchers, cowboys, gunfighters, such as they were. Um, you've got the six shooter in its various forms. You know, the Colt's the most famous. And the shotgun is, you know, just as it is today, just as it pretty much was in the 18th century, that, that thing was everywhere as well. So the three main classes of, of firearm, arguably, we, we can do something with those for you. Um, but we've all seen our fair share of, of Western movies, played games like Red Dead Redemption. What would you say, in your opinion, is the biggest misconception we have about firearms in that period on the frontier? I suppose the biggest would have to be that you know, the Old West duel, the, the gunfight as we imagine it. It happened. Um, it didn't happen particularly often. Firearms were obviously a, a big deal at that time. But they, you know, within city limits, they were typically prohibited. Um, so, which is to say most violence carried out with firearms is going to be basically as it is today. Gangs having the occasional shootout, people getting murdered. And talking of how rare those shoot shootouts, Jonathan, are, today we're going to be having something similar, not shooting at each other, hopefully, hopefully we'll hopefully all get not. on today, but we are going to be having another competition, right, and you're going to be involved this time. Yeah, yeah, happy to, happy to give it a go. I mean, I don't do this every day either, so... Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> fancy our chances. Bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the novice can always, um, can always surprise, and I'm definitely no expert. Excellent. So. Right, let's, let's go do it, let's go. <laughs> The Wild West is a term often used to describe the American frontier between the mid-19th and early 20th century, a place and time in history that has long captured the imagination. It was a period when old ways of living clashed with rapidly changing technology, and that was certainly the case for firearms. The term Wild West has also become synonymous with the Wild West outlaw. 
In a time where no real judicial system existed, and disputes could be resolved by deadly duels, the frontier is often thought to have become a breeding ground for criminal gangs robbing steam trains and banks, rustling cattle and killing lawmen. But was it quite as wild as the movies suggest? And was every man, woman and child really packing? The first weapons we'd be trying out are closely associated with the real quick-draw gunfighters of the late 1800s, as well as those in the movies. Revolvers or six-shooters were the choice of lawmen and criminals throughout the period. We'd be firing all six shots and we'd be judged on our group size. Right, Jonathan, let's get into this competition. Tell us, what have we got on the table here? Okay, we've got two classic Old West revolvers here. The one you're going to shoot is actually a reproduction, albeit a very, very quality reproduction. This is the Colt 1861 Navy, but so this is definitively Old West. It's before that, it's, in, it's uh, American Civil, Civil War, of course, War, yeah. which the two eras bleed together somewhat. Um, so that, that's 36 calibre, um, six shots, you know, just as capable as a later weapon in many ways, but then the reload is a bit of a fat of a pain. Okay, yeah. and over here we've got the, the Colt Single Action Army, synonymous with the Wild West period. Yeah. I mean, everyone's got one of these, haven't they? Or have they? Well, um, you'd be forgiven for thinking so if you watch the movies and the TV shows and yeah. read the books, <laughs> um, that literally everyone gets one of these, you know, January the 1st, 1873, when it's yeah. first introduced. Needless to say, that's not the case. They are very popular. Everyone that has the money and wants a reliable quality sidearm will will go for something like this or the Smith & Wesson Schofield or one of the other uh, options that are out there. But presumably they all kind of develop from military use before people start buying them, you know, members of the public. So often you find that something is developed primarily with the military in mind first, but with a, with a uh, very um, varied use, uh, multi-purpose firearm like a revolver or, or any pistol, Clearly, Colt's already got in mind that this could well be for civilians as well. And what would be the main sort of differences between these guns? I know this was sort of very preferable. A lot of people really swore by this gun. Yeah. What are we going to see in terms of accuracy and, you know, deadliness? Uh, they're both single action, so you have to cock them both before they shoot. Mm -hmm. They're both six shooters. They're both Colts. The key difference is the loading. It's slow, but it's not quite as slow as it as it might appear when it's loaded carefully, you know, slowly on a range because we're not too concerned about fighting off an assailant or something. <laughs> but this is better all day long because it's flip open the loading gate, uh, More sophisticated rotate mechanism. to the next, yeah. load, 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 load. When it's fully loaded, well, you're good to go. It's just undeniably more convenient, faster. If you are in a mythical Old West gunfight, you're going to want to be That's using that. Right, well, you're going to be using this one in the competition. We're going to be, for legal reasons, we're going to be using this one. OK, so make sure it's at the first position and it's just a case of inserting each cartridge in turn for safe carry. You would only load five and have the hammer down on an empty chamber because if yeah. you drop this thing, it would potentially go off. We are keeping this pointing down the range at all times, so I'm going to fully load it as though I'm off, off for a gunfight, mm -hmm. which of course we're not. Close the loading gate, and then I'm ready to go to full cock and shoot when you guys are. Good yeah, luck, ready when you are, Good Jonathan. Luck. Okay. I can't really see it, can you? No, not yet. Not yet. I'm not I'm not sure Jonathan's hit the bullseye there. Must be maybe maybe the sights on the original Colt are a bit off today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to see that I was still full of confidence at this early stage, but it wouldn't last long. They are all relatively close together. Yeah. It's not bad work oh. for a museum curator. Last time I shot first, so I think this time. It's your turn to go first. Brilliant, thanks mate. Pressure's on. Nice one. <laughs> the pressure was on. Luke was technically winning our challenge series for the year 3-2 and I couldn't let him extend his lead. Nipple, and for safety we're going to do that now. Uh, we have loaded off camera. 
So originally the compound was a, a fulminant of mercury, or oh, there's another compound used. Uh, today it's um, something a bit more advanced, but it, they're all shock sensitive explosives essentially. Just like a cap gun really, they're a little bit more powerful than that in order to make the thing go. And I'll hand the pistol to you. Okay. So Take a good, good high grip with your trunk. Keep your, your left hand away from the front of the gun. Yeah. Because there's fire coming out of there. So at this point. Your right finger, there you yeah. go. Just so you've got a bit more control, but your finger's not on the trigger, you see. Cocking this back. Yep. Nice tight grip, front sight on that red dot, and squeeze. <laughs> Woohoo! Shooting high. Okay. Uh, but we're going for group size, so finger out of the trigger guard. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think that's six. Not a bad effort at all. But Louis had been foolish and gung ho going for the authentic single hand grip. I'd need two to keep my aim steady. Right, Jonathan, why is it the moment I'm about to shoot this gun, my hands suddenly go all clammy? Why is that? Can't be helped. Can't be helped. Just don't drop it, please. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> right. Not sure how well Louis's done, but we'll see, we'll see later. The, the truth will out. So <laughs> I think what I'm going to try with this one is I'm going to try a slightly different technique. OK. And I'm going to try use, using two hands. Unconventional, Unconventional for, for the 1870s. But, uh, I'm hoping it will give me some more stability. We'll cheating. See. So cheating. You, you jumped in your DeLorean with it's your cheating. knowledge of modern tactical exactly. shooting. Can't use That's what hands. I'm going to do. Yeah. And I, I know now that there's sights as well, which Louis said said he didn't know. Uh, so <laughs> Okay, well we can all see the front sight. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, rear sight is on the hammer on this, so we'll go forward. Okay. I'll hand it over to you, keeping your left hand away from the cylinder now. Okay. Yeah. And get a nice high grip on it with your right hand though. Try okay. not to tilt Sorry. it up too yeah. much. Okay. 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 And then when you're ready, use your thumb to pull it to full cock. And then finger on the trigger and squeeze when you Sights are aligned on the target. Right. So you're on the bottom go. target. Yeah. I see what Louis says about changing the eyes. Okay. Yep. Keep the right eye open. Not going for the two hands. Oh yeah. <laughs> You've reminded me. <laughs> right. Here goes. Hold it there, yep. just in case there's a hang fire. And then what we'll do is just cock and fire the next shot. We'll give it another few seconds. Okay. This is reminding me of the Archibus. <laughs> Aiming. Yep. And fire. Wait. We have a misfire. It happens. It's older technology. Okay, when you're ready, pull it back to full cock. Fire. Try the next shot. Okay. Don't let that put you off. Same point of aim. <laughs> Okay, and carry on. Seriously, why always me? Okay, we have actually, we've, we have failed to count, so. <laughs> yes, I, I think, I can't remember how many I've shot. You hand it over to me. Yeah. We'll just take a look. Now, do you want that last shot, or, because you've got a chance of making your group bigger, you could always take the, uh, the excuse that it didn't fire. I think I'll take the last <laughs> shot if that's possible. That's fine with me. I would want to do that too. I've got to so do it. Okay. Full cock. Same point of aim. <laughs> and it went. Good. There we go. Okay, hand it over to me. Thank Thanks, you. Jonathan. You're most welcome. Again, no idea where that's gone. Ooh. Okay. Let's have a look. So just to clarify, Jonathan, your top right. Yep. Yep. Louis top left. I'm um, bottom left. Okay. I think 
<laughs> well, Jonathan was up first. I think we can safely say Jonathan's grouping is is the best there. It's not my best work, but um, <laughs> I think it, I think it does the job. I might as well have just taken this shot and then just, uh, <laughs> just given up, and then just given up at that point. But you know, fairly close to the bullseye. It's a but very good shot though, and that's all you need, right? I only need one. One, one good shot in a gunfight, right? But exactly. Yeah, the grouping is. Uh, is not exactly great. Do you reckon I've just about pipped you on the grouping? Again, I, only yeah. sort of one on the target. I think you have, and I think these were your last couple of shots. I was feeling pr pretty smug up until the last couple of shots, and you weren't really hit. Jonathan was the clear winner of the first round, but more importantly, Luke was ahead of me in second place. Clearly, handguns weren't my speciality, but I might have more luck with our next weapon. The Winchester 1873 had a huge capacity for the time and a rapid fire lever action. Apparently, its mechanism would later inspire the devastatingly powerful Maxim gun. Right, Jonathan, I'm quite pleased with my performance with the revolver, I must say, but we now move on to a different type uh, of gun, the rifles or repeaters, I should say. Um, are these the, the sort of most iconic weapons of the Wild West era? It's arguable, you know, the revolvers are, it's hard to get away from the, the romance of the revolver and of course you carry that on your hip at all times. The rifle, it's on your, it's on your horse maybe, or yep. it's, it's at home, if, you know, you don't want it to be at home, you want it there for the, for the fight. Um, so you, you can say either, generally you have to speak of them, I think, uh, almost in, in the same terms. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, these are pistol calibre rifles. Okay. Um, there were full length rifle cartridge Winchesters, of course, but the classic 1873, which is the original that we have here. Do we, do we know where that was from? Was that from uh, uh, the USA? Um, it's from the USA in terms of being made there. These were popular the world over, and the Brits were no exception. But the heart of it is. Yes, of course, the, the lever action, yeah. So, in terms of brand name, the Winchester is well, it's still it's still pretty well known today, isn't it? Everyone would kind of recognise that name. Why is that? Were they just a very successful gun maker? It's a bit of it's a bit of marketing and it's a bit of the origin of the rifle. So um, Benjamin Tyler Henry was the inventor, and Oliver Winchester is the boss of the company. So his name displaces Henry's essentially. And and talk to me about uh, the, the rate of fire. So with that lever action mm -hmm. system, I mean, you can really fire. What is it? Twelve. 12 rounds? It varies entirely on barrel length. Okay. Um, I won't do it with the original, <laughs> but. I'm <Understandable>. a <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm no expert with these things, but. Wow. Right, yeah. That's, that's pretty fast. Essentially, if you combine the pull of the trigger with the closure of the lever and you don't care as much where you're precisely aiming. So I would say I'm as fast as that on Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> Aren't we all? In, Aren't we all? In real life, but I guess we'll see how fast we are uh, when we give these a go. What, what are... Something told me that Jonathan had done this before. Again, we were firing six shots each and being judged on the size of our grouping. Push. Get the next one halfway in. Not necessarily as straightforward as the movies might make it seem. Admittedly, I am no cowboy. Okay, and then push the last one all the way in. Of course. All loaded, ready to go. Now we have, to, we have to cycle the action to chamber the first round, but we'll move forward. If I'm good to go. Yeah, action to go for us. Just look cool. Yeah. <laughs> Even from this distance, we could see that Jonathan had had a pretty good round. My back was already against the wall. Go for it, We're mate. We're loaded but not ready, so once you've taken control... Thank you very much. ...you can cycle the lever. So obviously front sight, yeah. rear sight here, line them both up, so put them on target. Yeah. And lever now. Lever now, yeah. All the way forward, all the way back. Yeah. And we're ready to go. Good to go, yep. Keeping it level.
good. That's it, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> that last good. shot that makes the group the largest. I was just, I was just carried away with the leader action. It's uh, kind of, yeah, kind of enjoyable. Yeah. So. <laughs> we'll make an outlaw <laughs> of you yet. Right, I'm all ready to go. Onto the firing point. Obviously, both hands on this. Okay. Front, left hand quite far forward. Yeah. Bring it up to the shoulder. Okay. Front sight in the rear sight. Line it all up. Okay. And when you're ready, cycle that action. Finger off the trigger. Operate the lever. That's it. Okay, and ready to fire? Yep. Don't think you operated it quite vigorously oh, enough. Oh, okay. Give it another oh, come there on. There you go. Ah. This seems to be one more try. A common occurrence of me. <laughs> Let me have a look. Yes. Do I just break rifles? That would be my superpower if I was a uh, superhero. Breaking rare firearms. No, Breaking rare firearms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's building the tension. Arguably not the best superpower in the book. As Jonathan struggled to clear the jam, I felt the nerves consuming me. But I had not let this put me off before, and I wasn't going to Over start to now. Right, here we go. Oh. I did all right. It looked good, it looked good. Maybe you rushed a little bit at the end there. I did, I did. I felt my brain going a bit foggy. <laughs> right, let's take a look. Let's, let's, let's see, have a let's look. Let's see how we did. Ooh, Ooh. wow, look at that. That's pretty is, close. This is a bit better, isn't it? Yeah. A bit better from everyone. A lot easier with a buttstock and two hands on the gun. And you see, yeah. no pressure got to Jonathan, clearly. No. Clearly, cool as a cucumber there. That's insane. Yeah, that's good grouping. That's so good. That is good grouping. And Lou, you've done a lot better this time. Yeah, well, there's those two outliers. I mean, we've both got the two outliers, haven't we? You probably need uh, a ruler to decide second place on this one. Yeah. Got a ruler? We can find one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you see, these four are very close together. I, I, I've noticed that we keep shooting, you know, it keeps going too high of the target. I we are know, at close why. range. Most, most firearms are, are zero to a longer distance, so at, okay. at that given distance, it would be on. Right. Yeah, having said that, for me, it's shot no. dead, on, dead on at this distance, so. You did all right, Jonathan, don't well, worry. Shooting high is not uncommon. <laughs> I, I think, think you're going to have to decide between yeah, us. Yeah, Jonathan, you're going to have to decide this one. Well, let's wing it. So, this, this is not a scientific approach, but I do believe we have a winner. Louis, second place. <laughs> Come on. Okay, that makes things a bit more interesting, that doesn't it? it? Going into the final, the final round, <laughs> which is the shotgun. Let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. Okay. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Jonathan had already won the competition with a round to spare, but second place was up for grabs, and it would be decided by a weapon that was all about power, not precision. Anything could happen. So. Talk us through with these shotguns. Well, um, the two we're going to be shooting, I think you're going to make me shoot this one-handed, so that's always fun. We are, definitely. <laughs> yes. These are both modern, so we're looking here for the effect on target. We're not, we're not saying these are Western, they're not. Although, this configuration of double-barreled side-by-side, yep. you'll definitely see in the movies. Absolutely. Uh, and I dare say some maniac tried it uh, in period as well. Um, I guess the, the main thing we should focus on is, now this is a, an example I've picked somewhat at random, uh, but it is a hammer gun. So the guns of the era had, had external hammers rather than uh, internal locks. But standard break open action, insert your 12 gauge, okay. close it up. Uh, you then have to manually cock and fire, a bit like the revolver, yep. Yep. single action, kind of. Could you fire both barrels at the same time and then one or the one barrel? 
Depends on the lock work, on the trigger mechanism. So this has the classic independent triggers. Yep. So you'd have to put both fingers in the trigger guard and boom at once. Right. Do okay. that. Yep. Or you'd go boom, boom like that. Interesting. So you, okay. you can you can finagle it and fire two shots almost simultaneously. Maybe not to be recommended because the, the the kick is going to be pretty. The recoil yeah. is going to be pretty <laughs> heavy. Yeah. Uh, accuracy is probably going to suffer. Um, but you know, basic configuration that you might find in the old west. This is an, an English gun uh, with a slightly wacky lightened buttstock. Not not massively spot on for the old west, but t perfectly plausible that someone might have purchased this. Period gun. Uh, would not be out of place. And we get the phrase riding shotgun from roughly this period, right? So we know that they were using them. Yeah, I don't know exactly when riding shotgun pops up, but it's definitely from the position on the stagecoach where you're guarding. Defending, yeah. Um, I was going to ask about uh, the sawn off. So literally people used to just saw off the barrel length. Uh, what, what was the they still reasoning do. behind they that? They still do. This is a relatively modern um, criminal style sawn off. Yeah. Um, so you saw off the buttstock, that's where you lose the most accuracy. Yeah. You can't shoulder the gun. And then your shot pattern is going to be bigger. Now yeah. it's not a linear thing that you, you cut off a certain amount of barrel and it gets proportionately massive, but you definitely lose. Uh, you don't get as tight a pattern. It, it's wider. It's spread. Yeah. But the main reason for doing it is not not kill everyone in the room, it is portability, concealability, yep. and shootability. Although, when it gets this short, it becomes a real handful. Well, uh, we'll see you handling that later, I yeah, guess. If you can beat us with this one, Jonathan, then you know, I think, uh, I think you can really claim the title of, uh, of gunslinger. Gunslinger, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, not, we're not shooting that, right? We're, we're shooting this. Yeah, this gigantic is a gigantic shotgun. This is a, a, a moderately nice modern um, over and under, so not side by side. 12, 12 gauge shotgun, 12 bore in, in the UK. The same technology is still in use. You know, the lock works a bit different. The fashion of, of having barrels one above the other has changed, but you know, they're not so different. It's no. more about the ammunition you, you put in them as to the effect. I know with the musket, I almost got knocked off my feet. Very, there we go. It's a very strong trigger. Ooh. I'm fearing that this might do a similar thing. It's got some, you know, the more mass from the projectiles, broadly speaking, the more felt recoil. So got you'll it. notice it. Okay. As long as it actually shoots for you, Luke, this time. Yeah. That'll be a start. That's true. Yeah, that would <laughs> be Modern <good>. technology, <laughs> not a problem. We'll see. Right, let's give let's them a let, go. Let's go for it. Because it could bounce back. Carry on, Ben. Okay. Wow, powerful, powerful blast. Uh, whew. Well, I'm glad we weren't shooting the sawn off. Jonathan had finished in style, but Luke and I's competition had come down to sudden death. Who would keep Just their nerve? Shot, so make it count. Okay, point and shoot. <laughs> Much the same as before, keeping it pointing down the range. Finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. Pointed down the range. Nice I'll take it from you. Thank Thanks you. Jonathan. No worries at all. And there goes the empty. Okay. Luke's got one shot. <laughs> can he beat it? Right. So okay. it's going to be if you can get a bit closer to the bullseye, more central with your shot pattern. Okay. Then you'll win this one. All right. So we'll load. I'm ready for it. Load me up. Straightforward, follow the trigger on this one. Finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot and get it well into your shoulder before you do. Okay, leaning into it. Yep. Okay. Here goes nothing. And it looks more central <laughs> to me. Let me take that, thank you. Before I get all excited. <laughs> Mind your eyes. Gun is clear. Okay, um, I'm a bit gutted, but I think Luke has 
taken at least the competition between us with, with, with this shot. I mean, Jonathan, you are the overall winner, even though your shot with the saw off wasn't your best. Unsurprisingly, with, with a short shotgun, one-handed with no sights, yeah. I was up here somewhere, wasn't I? Yeah, <laughs> and I think the pattern was, was, was bigger. So uh, then we had slightly up here, yeah. and then we had more central. So this round... Yep. Hey, listen, I tried to, I've noticed that a lot of the shots were going too high, so I actually aimed purposely lower uh, than the bullseye. And I, I think it's fair to say that, that target is, I mean, I've taken them out. Yeah, you've I've taken, taken them out. Taken them out. <laughs> well done, mate. Uh, Thank you. You take the Wild West challenge. I do. And unfortunately, I, do I think that, that means you get, you get the prize. I get the sheriff's badge. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I guess. And a hat. I can warrant this, wearing this as well. I don't think you can warrant that. Whether you can pull off the hat is probably unrelated. <laughs> I'm the sheriff now. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you so much for You're having me. Well. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Cheers. Great to Always have you a back. pleasure. And hopefully we'll be back at some point in the future. Good shooting, yeah. guys, both of you, honestly. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back in January with another video from the Royal Armouries where we'll be taking a closer look at another iconic weapon from the 19th century. Oh yes, we'll be back sooner than you can say Martini Henry. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to check out our first Historic Firearms Challenge video, which is on the screen now.